Welcome aboard, shipmates. This is Real Sailors, Real Sea Stories, a training program for the United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps by our supporters and friends at the Navy Talent Acquisition Group in Philadelphia. I'm your host, Warrant Officer David Sheets of the Naval Sea Cadet Corps, and I am joined by our support crew of MC1 Quinlan, who's our PAO, STG1 Lewison, who's our technical support director, and our talent scout from the Naval Sea Cadet Corps, Ensign DePippo. So today, today's topic is actually two topics in one. So cadets, you're really lucky. You're getting two for the price of one today. First, we're going to talk about aircraft fueling operations and then talk about the Warrior Challenge Program. Our presenter, same person, is Chief Hector Marino from NRD, Phoenix, Arizona. So cadets, remember, this is a live presentation. So if you're watching it live, put your comments in the comments section. We'll read through them and we'll get them out to the chief and get your questions answered. If you're watching the recorded view, leave your questions in the comments section after the presentation's over and we'll get back to you and we'll get you all the right connections. So if you have more questions for the chief about the Warring Challenge Program or anything else, he'll have the opportunity to interact with you at that level as well. So cadets, just like every presentation, we have a two hour, a two hour, what am I talking about? We have an online quiz to get two hours of virtual drill credit. Right, it's not a two hour quiz. It's about a five minute quiz. Regardless, when you're taking this quiz, make sure again, you're filling out your correct email address so you get your results, all right? So enough with that. Chief, this shift is all yours. Awesome, well, thanks for having me, sir. Uh, like Certainly. I said, Chief Mariano, uh, been in the Navy uh, 18 years now. Uh, both active and reserve side. So uh, I did go, I did start active duty first and then I went reserve. Um, but if you click ne next slide, we'll talk about my, a little bit of my history. So I was born in the Philippines, Manila, Philippines. Uh, I was actually, I, I grew up there. Um, I migrated in the States in 2019. So I finished high school. I went to college in the Philippines as well. Um, so why why I joined the Navy, right? Uh, it's uh, I was hesitant to 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 share the story, but but I think I think it could relate to some some in the audience maybe, right? So so growing up, uh, I wasn't I wasn't the best kid. I wasn't I wasn't the smartest or or the nicest kid. I was always into trouble. Uh, in the Philippines, there's always this. Uh, if, have you guys seen that show Cobra Kai? Uh, yes. Yeah, right. Uh, if, if you've seen the Karate Kid, it's it's almost it's almost that way. It's it's an it's an awesome show, and it, it brings me it brings back memories back in the day in the Philippines. But in the Philippines, where, where, where I grew up, MMA was was very big back in the '90s. So grappling, jujitsu, kickboxing was very big, and there's always rivalries against different uh, different dojos or 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 gyms, right? Right. So uh, I was always into fights. Um, family wasn't that great. You know, uh, the upbringing in, in my family wasn't that great. I was always bullied by my siblings. Um, my dad wasn't that great. I mean, he provided. Uh, it was it was an awesome life. He provided. Uh, we, we were very we were set financially, but but home status wise wasn't that great. Um, so I was always into fights. Uh, I was always into drinking, partying. Um, and finally, I, I came to the States. Uh, my, my mom thinks that I, I should mature. I, I could mature better here in the States and, and I could find a, a decent job. And, and that's what I did. Right. Uh, I did find a job. And then I found out that my girlfriend uh, was pregnant. Right. Uh, she emailed me actually from the Philippines. Uh, she emailed me many, many times. All I saw in my email was I'm pregnant in the subject line almost 18 times in my email. So, so I was, I was, of course, I was 19. I was very scared. I didn't know what to do. Uh, should I delete the email and, and just roll with it? Or should I be a good dad, right? right. So, right. so that's when I talked to my grandpa and said, you know what? You, you should join the Navy and, and, and get that escape and, and take care of your family. And, and that's probably one of the reasons why I joined the Navy is to care of my family, right? Uh, my daughter is almost 18. She's 17 now. And, and then st I'm still with my girlfriend, who's now my wife. Uh, we've been together almost uh, since 2000, since 2001. So, See, that, that's actually a really good story. And, and I'm, glad you're, I'm, I'm glad you're sharing that with the cadets because, you know, there's multiple paths that life takes you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But it really kind of ends up where your destination is, right? Yep. 
And you clearly have picked a really good one. I'm looking forward to hearing more about it. <laughs> so, so yeah, knowing um, when, I, when I went here, I had no idea there was different branches. Uh, my friend was in the Navy, so I joined the Navy, right? Uh, thank God, because uh, I'm glad I was not in, in different branches. I've worked with the Army before. Um, I, I love all branches, but I'm, I'm glad I'm in the Navy. Um, so, so that's why I joined. Uh, best thing about my my job uh, is, is of course meeting people, uh, traveling. Uh, with my job between active duty and reserve time, uh, I've traveled so many places: uh, Spain, Italy, Bahrain, uh, all those cool places. And I've I've worked with different nationalities, different different people. Uh, even when I my third tour in Iraq, which is probably one of the best tours I've had. Uh, I've worked with Iraqi nationals and, and learning more about their culture and 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 true oppression, right? Uh, and, and getting that purpose and why we're there. So, so, so that, I mean, that's very interesting because, you know, that's not talked about all that much. And, you know, as far as like the interaction with the Iraqi nationals and something positive, right? Yeah. You know, there's, is, there seems to be a negative spin on everything anymore. Absolutely. Um, but, of course. That wasn't your impression though, right? Because yeah. people on the ground are different. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just just the culture, the culture change over there, is is very different. Um, for example, right? Uh, some some of them, some of them have this idea that women should not should always be covered. Some of them think should not. Uh, right. A lot of them are actually pretty happy that Americans are there, and and now they're they're able to do more, more things. Uh, more free things like walking around or or even having 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 fun with with their friends in a bar uh, right. those those are the things that they couldn't do before so so just thinking about how how lucky we are as Americans how we can do you know the, the, the freedom that we have here in the states compared to what they have over there and and even even with that I mean their, their power would shut down every four hours and, and it's it, 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 it went up to 156 degrees up there and that's how hot it was when I was there. 156? 156 degrees. That's like surface of the sun time. Yes. It really hurt. But but like I said, it was probably one of the best uh, deployments I've ever had. Uh, the the people I worked with, it, it's very family oriented. And, and the mission that we were in, it's, it's very rewarding. That's great. So where am I at? So let's see, top Navy memory. Like I said, yeah, that's the, that was my third deployment in Kambuka, Iraq. It, it was detaining operations. Uh, we worked side by side with the Army. So it's, it's basically Army driven with Navy support. So we did some Army training with them. It was, it was about two months of, of training, uh, convoy operations, um, detainee operations, uh, interrogation operations, and stuff like that before we were sent out to, to the theater. And so next one is previous assignments. So when I joined, uh, of course, I went to boot camp, straight to A school in Pensacola. And then my first, my first tour was in the USS Bataan. And interestingly enough, uh, the Bataan is actually a, uh, a province in the Philippines where I grew up. Uh, if, if you guys know the history of the Bataan, you should research it. Right. It's, it's an amazing story about the Bataan death march where Americans and Filipinos side by side together um, battling with the with the Japanese army with the Japanese regime, right? Um, when when they lost when they lost the battle, they were forced to 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 march about 60 miles to the death camp, where where thousands of Filipinos and, and American soldiers died. Right. So uh, we actually met some survivors uh, in the Bataan when I when I was on board the ship. So uh, I did two tours there. Uh, when when the first Iraqi freedom uh, Iraqi Freedom War started in, in March of 2003. I was there in USS Bataan. We were launching jets and recovering jets all night long. Uh, like I said, great tour. After that, I got out the Navy, I decided to join the reserves um, because I wanted to do two things. I wanted to be a firefighter. I wanted to be law enforcement. And I'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, so I was in North Island as a reservist. In 2007, 2008, I went to Kambuka, Iraq. That's my third tour. And then I went back to the reserves. Uh, they asked me, they, they, they had this brand new unit, Fire Emergency Services, uh, to become a firefighter reserve side. So one, one dream down, they, they asked me to volunteer if, if I wanted to be a firefighter. I was like, yeah, hell yeah, send me up. 
uh, I went to Fire Academy. It was about two months long, and I've been doing fire rescue now for about 10 years with them. And now I'm uh, recruiting for the Navy Warrior Challenge. Oh, that's fantastic. Yep. So next slide. So like I said, um, so when I got out, uh, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to be either law enforcement or a firefighter. Uh, I'm, I'm truly blessed that the Navy gave me this opportunity to be to become a firefighter. Fighter. It's it's out of my field. Uh, I'm a flight deck fueler. Uh, I'm fueler at heart, uh, but they gave me an option to be a firefighter, so I took it. So it's it's been awesome to be a firefighter with the Navy. I've traveled so many places with it in the reserves. Um, we have fire stations all over the world, and and wherever we're needed, that's where they send us. On the civilian side, um, I, I finished my degree in criminal justice using the GI Bill, and, and I started applying for law enforcement. I started with um, Phoenix Corrections, so I was a correction officer, and with that, I was, I was their tactical support unit. So basically, it's, it's like their SWAT team, if, if you compare it to a police department. Right. So we did, we did a bunch of riots here. Uh, we did uh, the biggest riot in 2015 here in Kingman, Arizona. Uh, we dispensed about 200 grenades in there. It was Fourth of July, so it was it was a lot of fireworks, but wow. but but really really great times in, with with the teams. Um, and what's nice about the teams, they of course they they want veterans to be in the teams. So so if you see in the picture, a lot of those guys are are Army, Marines, um, uh, Navy veteran. One of them is a SWIC guy actually. He's a boat guy, with with the Navy. He's still a good friend of mine. Uh, still still in the reserves and and yeah. But but yeah, I was I was part of the, the tactical team. I was their sniper and medic. So there's a lot of training involved and 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 a lot of action in, in, the, in that unit. And then after that, um, I applied to become a probation officer where I deal with uh, drugs and alcohol. So so I go to court a lot. I work with the court system. Uh, basically, the what probation is is basically a a a program, right? Uh, so uh, let's say a person goes to court and, and their sentence is probation. So they're in probation. Basically, it's, they're holding off their sentence depending on how well they do in probation. So, so what I deal with is, is felony DUIs and drugs. So I really have the worst case scenarios, the worst of the worst addicts that we have here in Phoenix. And I try to change their mindset through therapy, through group work, through uh, homeworks, and, and through, um, through classes, through group classes that they go to, and, and of course, and of course uh, maintaining their drug-free life. So oh, that's, that's how I juggle Navy Reserves and, and, and the civilian life. And it's, it's nice because it's in, in the end, my, it's two retirements if, if you, if you want to look at it financially. Well, you know, the, the other nice thing too is that, you know, you're changing lives on both sides, right? Absolutely. The probation Very side, rewarding. also what you're doing with the Navy. So that's pretty rewarding, I would think. Yeah, Personally. absolutely. Yeah, it, it's, it's always nice to see a lot of my drug addicts and, and alcoholics. It's, it's amazing to see them graduate and, and get a real job, take care of their families, getting their kids back because they lost their kids. And, right. and, and seeing that in court where all of them are reunited and, and they're sober and with, with, with a stable job, it's, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing thing to see. Yes, absolutely. Very nice. All right, so next slide. All right, the pictures I dreaded to post. I had to, I had to dig through these pictures where, where I look like a baby. Um, so I'm not gonna read you guys the, the whole thing. I, I, I don't like putting that much information in PowerPoint anyway, but I'll give you a snapshot of what an ABF is, right? Aviation Boston uh Fuels. Right, so the purple shirts, they call us the grapes. Um, uh, I believe the best in the AB community because uh, without fuel, you can't do anything with your jets, right? You can put as much bombs as you can, but uh, without, without, that, without, without the blood flowing that jets, is, it's not gonna go anywhere. So, so we, we take pride in our community. Uh, there's, there's a lot that goes on in fueling a jet. Uh, we, look for, we look for that clear, clean and bright fuel that goes on. Right. If 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 a jet goes down, where the the first thing they're gonna see if, if we if we deliver that good good fuel, good jet fuel. Um, I started. What's what's nice about being in the baton? It's it's a smaller boat. It's an amphib, uh, uh, full of Marines and Harriers. 
I was able to I was able to get qualified in flight deck, in quality assurance, and in the pump rooms below decks. Uh, I started in the flight deck fueling jets. Um, so over there, what would we make sure is is when they land or recover jets, uh, if they need fuel or we need to defuel an aircraft for safety or for any reason, we do that. And in the QA side, when I would became a QA supervisor, um, I think you can go next slide and, and see see all my. So if if you look at the, if if you look at the, uh, the aspect of of fueling right. Um, for the QA side, quality assurance, we test fuel from the pump room. We test fuel from the flight deck. That's our early checks. Uh, we bring them down to the lab. We make sure there's no water in it. There's no sediments. Uh, we just make sure it's really clear, it's really bright, and it's it's jet fuel. Uh, we make sure it's jet fuel and not diesel fuel because uh, that could happen. It could ruin the jet, and it's it's detrimental to the, to the pilot's life, right? Right. Um, and in the pump room side, when I work there, uh, that's that's where a lot of uh, the technical stuff happens. Work and and make sure that we test those fuels and it goes up to the flight deck again, clear, clean, and bright. So so that's a snapshot of, of what the job entails. It, you know, it's it's pretty. It's pretty interesting that you were on the baton because I actually spent a little bit of time on that ship. Uh, oh, sweet! During Fleet Week New York about three years ago, and okay. I, you know, it when you're starting to watch the operations and everybody doing everything, I, I'm telling you the the grapes really hang together tight as a crew. Yeah, they, they okay. seem to have more fun and more camaraderie than just about any other group there, right? Yeah it's it's definitely a tight-knit community and it, and it, I, it was just amazing how they're they're doing all that serious hard labor together as a team to get all that done it's just you know it's it's pretty inspiring to see those people from all different walks of life just mission focused it's really great yes sir yes that's that's exactly it it's, it's a very diverse diverse community and, and we work together as one team it's awesome and I think the next one is the video. Um, replenishment set seas. Those are very complex. It takes everybody from the most junior sailor we have to me being the most senior ABF in the division as far as checks and balances, verification, looking things over three or four times to make sure they're right. And also those sailors have to be in the right places at all times. You know, when you see a purple shirt, when those bells ring, everybody responds. Well, uh, if you walk around the ship at any given time, you can see purple pipes run through the entire ship through any space all over, just like you would arteries and veins in the body. So in a sense, it gives life to this entire ship, just like blood does to your whole body. Everything that you walk around and you see purple represents jet fuel, represents an ABF, represents the great, represents the uh, exceptional, creative, and uh, constructive sailors that make up B4 Division. You know, if there's one thing I can say about my job is that, that I'm very privileged to have a, the littlest influence on such an extraordinary and creative bunch of young sailors. They're extremely important. Um, if those sailors aren't on the hustle all the time, uh, whether the below deck, flight deck, um, making sure that they are, they're watching stringent procedures, making sure that that fuel is clean getting to the aircraft, and uh, all those young sailors on the flight deck, if they're not where they're supposed to be and getting to somewhere when, they, when they're supposed to be there, that's seconds off when the aircraft is supposed to be where it's at in theater. The jobs are extremely important because it comes down to absolute seconds and uh and how they perform and do their job you know when you uh you look at the flight deck you know you see all the different colors we have out there all the different jobs and everything that's moving they always say it's organized chaos but a lot of those parts that move a lot of these gears that turn that make the flight deck mission capable and you know possible it, it doesn't happen without a you know we're literally the lifeline of the flight deck and throughout the ship really you know nothing could get done unless we fuel it if our fuel is up to standards if it's clean and clear and sediment free 
the most rewarding part of my job. I'd have to say it's when the you see the aircraft on the catapult and he gives that final salute to the shooter, you know, saying he's ready to launch and you see Cecil launch off the deck and know that he wouldn't be able to do his job. He wouldn't be able to support our ground forces on the ground if I didn't do mine. That's a really good overview. Yeah, it's a pretty cool video. I'm glad I found it. And you know, and cadets, I hope you're you're you know thinking about this. Is you know how important every single job is, right? Every single job. So you may just take fueling for granted. You you know you just go to the gas station with your folks, or if you're old enough, you're doing it yourself, and you just pump it. You don't even think about it, right? Yes. But absolutely. It, but you you multiply the danger you know exponentially for aviation. If there's anything in that fuel, any water, any sediment, it's you know it's not the right octane. If it's the wrong fuel, it's over. It's like Absolutely. over. And oh, by the way, it's highly flammable, right? Yes, uh, it's it's not as flammable as as diesel and gasoline. That's why JB five is, is is one of the safest uh, fuels to be have on board, right? Uh, for jets, yeah. The the flash point is is much lower. Right. So. You know, what about damage higher. control? Because we've talked about damage control quite a few times on this broadcast with, you know, different DCs and all that type of stuff. You know, it's not water flowing through the ship. It's fuel, right? So it's it's it definitely has a, a sense of uh, urgency when something happens. Oh, absolutely. Um, so almost almost monthly or quarterly, we do, we do have flight deck, um, flight deck training on firefighting. Right. All ABs are firefighters. And, and if you go to the ABH side, they actually have the crash and salvage crew. So everyone, every shirt has a purpose when it comes to fire in a flight deck. And for the most part, um, the the grapes or purple shirts, they will man the hose. But most importantly, they are uh, critter carriers. So so we're, we, we pretty much man all the uh, the baskets, making sure for, for any injuries, we, we carry them out for the stretchers. So... Critter so carriers. Okay, yeah, good. That's that's basically our, our our main job, but but we also man the hose as well. Um, and then what's what's great about what's what's great about uh, the Navy is is there's so much collateral duties you, you can do. Um, when when I was working in the Bataan, uh, my my friend was was search and rescue swimmer, and is, and also an ABF. So so if if we have any man overboard or anything happen. Uh, uh, something dropped or whatever during it's, it's mostly man overboard and for the most part it's always a chem light that's that that's been thrown out to sea and they call man overboard just to make sure but he suits up and and, and goes in the water so so that that's what's that's what's great about the navy it's it's we're not stuck in just one job we can we can do so many things we can do security if you want to you can volunteer to do security and and you can definitely try out for for sar search and rescue swimmers awesome so, Let's see, next slide. All right, so so like I said, what I do, um, I started, of course, in the baton as a flight deck crew leader, uh, crewman first and then crew leader, basically handling all fuel operations in the flight deck, making sure everyone's safe, uh, making sure that my crew members are testing the fuels. So if, if you saw that swirl of the, of the bottle, uh, that's, that's a one way to check if there's any sediments in, in, in the fuel. Um, and then after that, I worked as a flight tech controlman. So if you look at, if you, if you ever been in the ship or, or saw it on, on video, um, there's like a bubble in there where you go to and you work side by side with the handler and other ABs and, and you basically, uh, the handler lets you know which aircraft needs fuel and you call it out to the shop and, and your crew goes out. So it's, it's, it's a very cool job where you see everything else. Um, and then I went QA supervisor. So that previous job, just just stick on it. I mean, that's not your first assignment, right? You'd probably have to get a lot of training in order to be, you know, I don't know if you're a yes. dispatcher in order to do that, but you really got to know what's going on. Absolutely. And just like I, I know when I when I used to be uh, training uh, sea cadets here in Phoenix, I know I know you are you guys still doing a lot of PQS? Uh, yes, depending on the unit, yes. Okay, yeah. So, so same thing in the in the navy, right? We we do a lot of PQS. Every every uh, everything that you do requires a PQS. You you got to be qualified. 
uh, they gotta they gotta you do you do your PQS signatures and you do, you go on a board, and, mm-hmm. and as soon as you do that, then you're under instruction, and then next thing you know, you're 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 leading the way. Awesome. Yep. So and then after that, I I became QA supervisor and I was in charge of training, making sure every uh, all of our sailors are are trained up. Their PQS are signed off, and if I I do their interviews, their boards with with the chiefs as well. Um, and then my before before I got out of the Navy, I wanted to check out what the pump room is like, and, and that's where I ended up. So I, I became a pump room operator, learning all the, the pump room stuff. And then what's nice, like I said, if, 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 if you're a go-getter, if you care about your career, um, which, which I learned having a good mentor, uh, it took me about a year to, to really care about my career-wise, uh, having a good mentor. Um, I was able to finish my PQS in that four years, and and and, and not many sailors do that. Usually, they they finish just the flight deck, and then they go to a different command. But I was able to finish the entire PQS of ABF in in, in one command. So, oh, so which, which was awesome. Right. Do you think that was a you know a, a big help in relationship to uh, uh, attaining a chief chief rank? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, you know, when it comes to the chief board, they, they look at everything else. They look at all your qualifications, and and of course, as a chief, they, they look at leadership as well. Mm-hmm. So, how successful are your sailors because of your leadership? So, right. Good point. Um, after that, like I said, I went to Kambuka, Iraq. Um, so we have different compounds, uh, and what the compound that we have is the worst of the worst. We we handle the 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 worst detainees where they only get one hour one hour per shift to go out and they're they're locked away for about 11 hours so for 22 hours they're locked away and we give them that one hour recreation um so so yeah over there i was a compound guard compound lead we did uh, a little bit of interrogation and then and a lot of detaining operations uh and then when i came back i became a firefighter and, and it's it's been it's been awesome to do firefighting. Um, I was sent to fire academy, and I was sent to Texas as well to do EMT, where I was able to work um, the ER. I was able to deliver a baby, which was uh, really a long process. <laughs> it was a long process, so it was, it was very weird. But but like I said, everything was rewarding. I, I love what I love about the the fire emergency section is 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 the medical stuff. Um, we did a lot of a lot of emergency CPRs, uh, and and that's 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 what I really love to do. Um, and now a recruiter here in uh, NRD Phoenix doing the Navy Water Challenge program. So and, sure. and that's that's what I want to talk to you about today. So how did that? You know, these are a lot of very diverse things, right? Yep. So you know, going from you know, a, a fueler on the baton, right, to you know security in Iraq. Right to firefighting, like th- those seem like pretty major pivots as far as careers or opportunities, right? So, yes. how, how did how did that come about? Just be a yes man. <laughs> okay. So uh, the, the Iraqi tour, I volunteered for. Right. Uh, firefighting, I volunteered for, uh, and and like I said, if if you put your mind into it, have that good mindset, have that disciplined mindset, you can do anything you want, and, and especially in the Navy where everything is almost possible as, as long as you don't quit, and as, as long as you keep trying. I'm not I'm not gonna say it was it was smooth operation. Uh, there's a lot of struggles in my career, but but in the end, I I'm no victim. Uh, I always come out as a victor. Uh, I mean, that's that's my mentality. Uh, I don't that's have that victim mentality, and, and I'm not gonna get. I'm, I'm not gonna take no for an answer, and I'm not gonna be defeated, and and I'll just push through. That's great, Chief. Yep. And and now so so now we're we're at the Navy Warrior Challenge Program side. So so what I do now here in NRD Phoenix, right? I work with six scouts. I work with two Navy SEALs, one boat guy, SWIC guy, and uh, one retired senior chief SEAL. Uh, he's, he's our mentor. And our co- coordinator is SL1 Stration. Um, I, I, I wanna do a shout out now that you, you guys will see him next week. He's gonna be your um, guest speaker next week and he's gonna talk more about what the program entails, what it takes to be a SEAL, 
and he's going to talk about the other programs in uh, in the Navy Water Challenge program, which is uh, SWIC, Diver, EOD, Air, and of course SEAL. He was a an instructor as well, so he was an instructor in Hell Week as well. So he, he can wow. he'll talk about he can talk a little bit about that, and 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 you can ask away all the questions you want. Uh, SO one will be willing to answer those questions as well. Just oh, not fantastic. just not you know those secretive questions, of course. <laughs> so but, cadet, this is a, a two part presentation. So we'll have a representative from the Navy SEALs next time. So tell your friends, tell your shipmates. All right. He's very excited to meet you guys, and uh, he's, 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 he's a good guy, and, and he, he's, he has very vast knowledge about the program and, and of course, uh, and, and what it takes, what it takes to, to become a Navy SEAL. So, with that being said, Warrior Challenge Program. So, um, in, in the Navy, as a civilian, you can, actually, you can actually have a Navy Warrior Challenge Program contract, right? You can score that contract, but, but we don't give that away. You have to earn it, right? So uh, I'm not going to talk about what the process is in different ANTAGs or TAOX or, or NRDs uh, districts. I'm going to talk about the process that we have here in Phoenix. So here in Phoenix, what happens is, is of course, you got to be a sailor first, right? You got you to qualify to be a sailor first, uh, meaning ASVAB, you got to pass the ASVAB and you got to pass MEPS, right? You got to go through MEPS and pass the physical. As soon as I get those, I'm going to make sure that you qualify mentally, which is your ASVAB. I'm, uh, I have a calculator. I, I need to make sure that you qualify for any of the programs or all of the programs. Um, waivers, we do accept waivers, case-by-case uh, -case basis. Um, on the physical aspect, as soon as you're physically qualified to join the Navy, um, we make sure you're physically qualified to join the Navy Water Challenge Program. And as soon as you sign all the paperwork, SO1 station or um, our mentor or one of our scouts or myself will 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 do an interview with you on why you want to join, uh, what is it for you, uh, what's uh, if if you got what it takes, and you come to our workouts, and then you take a PST. So a PST is a physical screening test. Uh, this is what's going to determine whether you get a contract or not. So physical screening test um, is swimming, it's push-ups, it's sit-ups, pull-ups, and a run. All in one day, right? Uh, and all those are timed, right? So it's a 12-minute swim, 500-yard swim, and then you get a 10-minute break, and then you do two minutes uh, push-ups, two minutes sit-ups, uh, then you do your pull-ups, and then you do a mile-and-a-half run. Right. So, and and if you could see, here's the uh, minimum standards. Right. So, of course, depending on the program, the standards are are either higher or lower. Right. And of course, SEAL is going to have the highest standard. As you can see, SEAL is the only one who has. You need at least ten pull-ups minimum to to be able to to pass the the PST. Uh, the time, 10.30, 12.30 for the swim. And like I said, this is basic. And, and just know, uh, basic will not get you a contract. It, you know, cannot guarantee you a contract either, right? You got to be competitive because you're competing within the nation. You're competing against everybody in the nation to get that contract. Uh, so, if you can hey, see it. Let's, you know, let's talk a little bit about what you mean by contract. Okay. Okay. So... So basically, a, a contract is, is, is the job that's guaranteed to you. So when you go down, let's say you go down to take your ASVAB, right, and MAPS, the next day you do your physical. As soon as you pass those, you sit down with a classifier, which is another, another Navy guy or a Navy girl, right? Uh, you sit down and see the jobs that you qualify for. Uh, you pick that job that you qualify for. And you sign that contract, and the job is not yours until you, uh, when you ship to boot camp, and and as soon as you graduate boot camp, you go to that A school of that job that you chose. So a contract is basically is basically that. So if you get a seal contract, uh, you go to boot camp with a seal contract. Um, as soon as you graduate boot camp, you go through the pipeline of uh, seal training. So that's that's what a contract is. 
Right. So that doesn't guarantee that's what you're going to be. That just absolutely not. School yes. is there. You still have to excel at each one of these things. Absolutely. So, yeah. so, and 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 like I'm sure, uh, Seal is is probably the most popular spec war um, contract out there, and and the most popular popular uh, special warfare people in in the world, right? So, and and if if you're googling or YouTubing the the pipeline of Seal. Uh, the graduation rate of that is, is very, very low. So you got to be really the best of the best. They want, they want the best of the best and, and they weed out, they weed out the weak in the beginning. Um, there's actually a great documentary about uh, class 234 in discovery uh, about seals. And, and, and they, I think it was from 200 candidates and down to maybe 20. Right. So only, only a fraction of them will really make it through the seal program and get that pin. But, but it doesn't mean that you can't try again, right? Right. I do have some of my candidates who, you know, who, who are set back, but, but they, they keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And, and, that's, and that, that's, that's what's going to set you apart is, is, is you don't quit, in my opinion. I mean, I've never been there, but so one we'll talk about it next week. <laughs> nice teaser. <laughs> yeah. So, and on the right side, you'll see auto qualifying scores. So what that means, you go to our PST, uh, you you do these scores, right? Let's say you're in a you're trying out for a seal contract. You swim 9:30, uh, 500 yard swim, and 9:30 you do 75 or more, 75 or more sit-ups and push-ups. You do 15 or more pull-ups, and you do run in less than 9:30. You're 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 qualified to get a contract, uh, guaranteed. So it's auto qualifying as long as there's nothing in your record, as long as your record's clean, as long as you physically and, and mentally qualify. And you have these scores. As soon as they send it up to the spec war shop, they'll give you that contract. If not, then you go in the draft where they pick you. So. Ah, okay. So, but I there's as I'm looking at these scores, they're not dramatically different. I mean, seals is you know a little higher, right? But yes. It you know the the push ups, sit ups, and pull ups, and the time. I mean, 15 seconds versus you know zero, right? Yes. For, for that, that's not a lot of time. Yes, but uh, uh, doing doing this back to back, um, seeing seeing all the candidates, it's 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 quite a struggle to okay. to to meet to meet the that requirement. So um, some some candidates do still keep pushing, uh, or right. or some candidates just you know pick a, a program that's actually more suited for their physical abilities too. Sometimes. Okay, so this is sometimes an eye opener. Like, Absolutely. Okay. Right. Yep. So prior to taking this, you were talking about mentors and probably OS, you know, uh, SO1 will probably talk about this a little bit more, but, um, you know, is, are you training it well in advance of taking this? this? Isn't like first day walking in the recruiter's office and doing this. This is, you know, after amount of time after training, say I'm, I'm ready to go or does yes, this happen yes. right from the very so beginning? We, yeah. So, so we are heavily involved with our candidates. And I and I can I can talk about it uh, as far as our team. We yeah. are heavily heavily involved with our candidates. As soon as they sign that paperwork that they can work out, uh, uh, and and they're good to go as far as physical and and mental that they're they're qualified for for the program, they start training. Um, all, almost daily we have workouts daily. Um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays we have our Zoom meetings at. 0400 or 0500 depending where they're at um, and what's nice about that we have meetings with other um ntags or districts uh special warfare programs and and what 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 happens there is they do teachbacks where they learn they get they're given the homework and these candidates get to um get to teach about about that topic so if they're given a homework about what the SWIC pipeline is a candidate will be there in front of hundreds of, of candidates and instructors and and they'll get you know they get to teach about the program just to build more confidence know more about the pipeline and and have that pride in the community and we have guest speakers as well that comes out uh, special operators um, retirees that come out and, and it's it's awesome it's an awesome program that we do here and it's it's early very early in the morning and then as soon as as soon as that that's over they go straight to workouts and and they also complete a pqs um and 
with this PQS, it, it was generated by one of our uh, chiefs, who's a sweet guy, um, and, and some of his friends in the community. They made us um, PQS um, to earn their brown shirts. So, so you start off with either a warrior chan shirt or a white shirt, and if you want to earn that brown shirt, and if you know in the community, um, watching or watching a documentary, it's 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 basically a milestone to earn that brown shirt, and and hopefully as the one I'm sure as the one will talk about it again next week. Um, so this PQS is 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 kind of thick. It's it's a lot of homework, but it tells you you know it, you, uh, our candidates complete it. They bring it everywhere. They bring it in all trainings. Um, they better bring it in every training. Uh, we we check on that as well. We're very strict with that. But it, it asks them, you know, why they join, uh, what's their why? I, th I think that's the basic, um, that's the basic question and the most important question on, on why, on why they want to join. Because if they want to join just for the name, just for that pin, um, usually they're not they're not cut, cut out for it. But but some some other some other candidates they have that uh, they really have that passion and, and why they want to join. Right and 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 that passion, like I said, that passion of joining and and the, and they're very prepared because of that. They have that mentality. They have that go go get them the mentality and 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 like I said, um, they're they're very very motivated. Um, and the PQS also talks about all the programs. So no matter what program you're in, uh, mm -hmm. you'll have homework in the PQS to to research what SEAL is about, SWIC is about, ELD is about, divers about, or air. Uh, because you never know. Maybe, maybe you know. Maybe they want to be a seal, and then they find out. You know, maybe EOD is 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 much a it's a better fit, and and that's that's more uh, that's more fitting in my lifestyle, or that's what I want to do, and and that's where that's that's where they go instead. So, so it's a great program. Like I said, we're very heavily involved with the, with, the, with our candidates. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so. You know, so that we have some time for the, some of the questions for the cadets, and they have some historic questions that I'll, I'll kind of toss your way. And cadets, if you have questions, make sure you're putting them in the chat window so we can read them off to the chief and uh, get some responses for you. But you know, one thing that that I had the privilege of doing is I had the opportunity to go back to RTC Great Lakes as a Sea Cadet Division Officer. Oh, awesome! And it, it was nice because it's, it's a totally different place from when I was there because they had electricity and food. <laughs> but um, the, what I was noticing is that their experience in recruit training is slightly different, mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as being part of the warrior challenge versus other divisions. So it looked like there are particular divisions set up for candidates who are contracted into those, those fields or not. So, you know, is, was my impression correct? And yes, you, yes, you, yes. Um, um, I'm not sure if there's still. I'm. I'm from the last thing I've heard. I know they're, they're still doing the 800 division, uh, where all these candidates are. Right. Um, basically, they, they. I mean, they get they get extra workouts, of course, uh, just to prepare for A school. Um, okay. Other than that, it's it's almost the same exact thing, but with just more workouts. Uh, okay. They get they get time. They get more time in the pool, basically. Okay. Yeah. So, and which which is very cool, needed. pretty neat so they i'm sure they're gonna have to get used to that especially if you're going well all of those right well yes eod is more land-based is it not or is there a, you know water? no they're 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 everywhere yeah they dive as well okay see i'm not overly familiar with the community but i guess next week i'll find out more right yeah you'll, you'll find out more with that's demonstration okay. <laughs> fantastic so one of the, the, the questions that our cadets need to know, because they're starting to make decisions in, in career paths and things that they want to do in life, and this is the right time, clearly, to do it. So one of the things that rolls into their minds is, you know, how do I prepare for something? How do I become successful? Like, for example, going to recruit training, right? Mm -hmm. just the thought of it, regardless of your rate, just going to recruit training, you know, there's this you know, this mental picture that they might have. And maybe, you know, it's it's demystified a lot in maps, right? But in order to like step off the bus first day there in in Great Lakes, do you have any good advice for people that are just about or about to go onto that journey? Like what should they prepare for? What should they Absolutely, do? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, first, I'll give you a story of, of, of my process, right? Okay. 
I had a very, very crappy recruiter. <laughs> hey, <laughs> me too. <laughs> yes. So I was, you know, you know how how there's the stigma that that candidates or or future sailors are just numbers to recruiters. I think that's that's the that's the first thing I wanted to change. I wanted to change that. I wanted to change that notion as, as as I became a recruiter. I wanted to give the best customer service. I wanted to give them the most honest answers that they can get, and and the best training so they can be more prepared in boot camp. Right. right. So so when I joined the Navy, I saw my recruiter twice. I saw him actually three times. Right. Paperwork. I saw him in Meps when I swore in, and I saw him when he picked me up from my house to go to boot camp. Um, you have the same recruiter sounds about right <laughs> probably yeah right, right, and, right. and that was that was, uh, that was three months of waiting right and he did not give me any any book to study or or how to prepare mentally or physically right so when i went to the airport i saw i saw everyone i saw everyone that's going to the boot camp uh same division as as me and mm -hmm. i saw them studying a book and, and first thing i asked what are you guys studying i said you never got this book i said i never got the book so, so they were in a delayed entry program, which I didn't even know existed. So, so what I say to, to future sailors or, or civilians that's, that, that's wanting to join is prepare mentally and physically, right? Um, join the debt program, be active in the debt program. We give you a start guide where you can, you can pretty much study and study, study what you need to study for boot camp. It's it's super easy. It's it's a little bit of memorization. You'll get there. Um, if if I did it without, you know, having it before boot camp, and I and, and I survived it, you guys can too. Um, physical training is a must. Um, I I say, I say concentrate on the running. The running is is basically what what pretty much. Um, uh, it's, it's hard for for future sailors, especially especially nowadays. I'm I'm not sure whether it's a technology or people are not playing outside anymore. Right. But but the cardio is is what's lacking. Uh, push ups, sit ups, and pull uh, push ups, sit ups, and 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 run. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. as, as just a regular contract. Just concentrate on that. Uh, if you if you don't know how to swim, learn how to swim. If not, they'll teach you in boot camp anyway. Um, and ha and have a great mindset. Uh, stay out of of, of, of the negative negativity um what i tell my future sailors or even my junior sailors always be on time look sharp and do your job to the best the best of, of your abilities and, and nobody can touch you and yeah. uh, that's and then that's that's basic seamanship right there just just be on time look sharp and do your job to, the best way you can excellent right. excellent so i want to throw a disclaimer out there okay so that was you know the chiefs in my experience and that was many years ago many years ago right um, every person that I've dealt with, with uh, NTAG Philly or NRD New York or through the speaker program, every recruiter that I've dealt with has the same mindset that the chief just talked about. So the way that Navy is cultivating future sailors and getting them prepared is so much better now, right? It's, it's, it's like light years ahead. So I was in delayed enlistment program for a year and I didn't mm -hmm. see the guy until he picked me up. Wow. Right. Um, and OK, fine. I turned out, I guess. Nonetheless. Right. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so that's not the same. And the other thing, cadets, is as Chief was talking about, as far as studying and knowing materials, the materials are the same stuff that we teach in the Sea Cadet Corps. Right. So take the training seriously that you're getting now in the Sea Cadet Corps. And when you go, if that's what your decision is, to pursue something like this, it will make it a little easier for you. But most importantly, you'll be able to support your fellow shipmates because you have some of that background and that helps you with your leadership as well. Not that you're a know-it-all, don't get me wrong, right? But it'll make things easier for you. So just as Chief was saying about running, it's also mentality yeah, as well. Absolutely. And what's great about Sea Cadets is you guys learn about your ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, that's knocked out. Uh, you learn how to march, how to do formations, and all that. And and that's 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 a lot. It's a lot of basic things that you guys learn in Sika. That's and that's that's applicable in boot camp. So so all good stuff. Exactly. So um, we didn't you know we didn't talk about A school too much. So you know you, so you went to ABF A school in Pensacola. Right? No, actually I went to just the regular undesignated airman school. Oh, you did. Right. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was she only about. 
Yeah, it was just three weeks long. Yeah, okay. it was three weeks long. Uh, I graduated, um, I think, I graduated on a Friday, and I left that night to Pensacola. Um, okay. And I started school that Monday. Um, okay. As soon as I graduated, I was afforded two weeks of leave, and I went to the ship, which was already in the Middle East. So they flew me to Bahrain, and from Bahrain, they flew me to the, to the ship. But A school, A school is super fun. Um, at first, you kind of you kind of want to act like you're still in boot camp, but it's it's very much more relaxed. Uh, you have more time to yourself. You can you can actually go and and get get whatever food you want, uh, as long as you know. And and my in my experience, I, I think just concentrate on your studying in, in, in A school. I know it gets fun, but 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 just just remember, you know, um, the Navy. The Navy pays you to, to do your job and to learn your job and, and right. to do it well. Yes, so. exactly. Um, what was your you know your first impression when you went to the ship? Because oh man, it can be uh, overwhelming. I would assume it was very overwhelming because I got lost. Uh, okay. it, it was it was it was tough for me to find where everything was at. Uh, it took me about a month to to kind of. To kind of know where everyone's at or where everything's at, and, mm -hmm. and even in the four years, I haven't even checked all the spaces in that four years. Right. Um, but but knowing uh, as, as an AB, of course, I, I had to know where the pump rooms are, where the flight decks are, and when the hangar bay is. So so, but like I said, um, I, I did get seasick my first two days, but after that, uh, I love I love being in a boat, best sleep ever. And we were even there for Hurricane Katrina. So, so oh really. It, yeah, so we so helped what, out. We, we helped out in Biloxi, Mississippi. Yeah, what was so, that like being on a ship that size and in, in, in that weather? It, it was it was a lot of uh, rolling, uh, mm -hmm. but but very relaxing. But what what's rewarding about that? We were actually on the way home, and and everybody was so happy, and the ship stopped. And next thing you know, we're we're making a U turn to Biloxi, Mississippi, to help out with the um, with the victims of Hurricane Katrina. So okay. it, it was very rewarding. What, what, what we did was we picked up uh, uh, Mexican Marines from, from a Mexican Navy uh, ship. We picked oh. them up. We, we, were even, we were in our LCACs, which are hovercrafts or LCACs. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's like small boats. Uh, we picked them up and we went to Biloxi, Mississippi, and we helped out with, uh, alongside the fire department and the police department, just handing out food or, or, or just, just building stuff and, and, or, or helping out with shelters and stuff like that. It was very rewarding. It's really okay. cool. It's a lot of humanitarian things that you can do in the Navy. That I could say. Exactly, exactly. Um, do you have any uh, final words of advice for our cadets? Final words of advice? Yeah. Uh, don't quit. Okay. And, and life, life, life can get, it, it can get tough, right? Um, I, I like to say the story to, when, when I used to go to high school presentations right uh, life could be stressful uh you could have um a lot of stress a lot of pain adversaries right but you can be three things in life right it's 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 a it's a it's a really cool story it could be either a carrot you could be an egg or you can be a coffee bean right uh you give those three things the same adversary give them hot water boiling water what happens? What happens to the carrot, right? If you boil carrot for ten minutes, what happens? It gets softened, right? It softens up. So you can be a carrot, right? When when you're bombarded with stress, when you're bombarded with pain, you could be a carrot where you just soften up, you close yourself up, and and you just become this 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 carrot who just isolates himself in the world. You can be that carrot, right? Uh, what happens to the egg when it when you when you boil the egg for about ten minutes, right? You harden up inside, right? The egg hardens up, right? Just like in life, we bombard you with with pain, with with suffering, with stress. You can be that egg. You can be hard inside. You can again push everyone away, right? And even even push yourself away. You're hard on the outside, and you're even harder on the inside. Or it could be the coffee bean. What happens to coffee bean when, when you boil coffee bean for about 10 minutes, right? It changes the water, right? It changes the environment instead, yeah. right? So, so, so my advice to you is be the coffee bean. When life 
when when 2020 or whatever or whatever life hits you with right instead of it changing you you change them change that environment and they promise you just like a coffee bean you'll change others too they'll see how positive you are you see how how awesome you are and and how you take life and how you're a victor not a victim it, it will change even your environment not just you so so that's my advice to you guys so you know hopefully that relates to you that that's really great you know i you know when he started that i was like where's he going with this that, <laughs> that makes complete sense thank you and i will just blatantly steal that from you awesome and, and i won't give you any credit because that's another, <laughs> of course that was hey, very good chief. don't worry thank about you it very much yeah i thank forgot you. who the author was anyway so <laughs> so that's the way it works out okay yep. so i want to close this up with the one question that our cadets really like to ask everybody okay all right so Everybody gets the same question at the very end. So this is the question, and here it goes. All right. So if you were to describe the Navy in only one word, just one word, that's all you get, what would that word be, and why? Hmm. Opportunity. Opportunity. That's okay. what the Navy is. Okay. Right? Why is that? I think uh, in the 18 years that I've been in the Navy, I think the Navy has given me the opportunity to be disciplined, the discipline to become the leader that I am right now. Um, give me the opportunity to, to actually achieve all my dreams, um, whether it's financially or the job that I want. Um, and, and I think all the opportunities are, are there in the Navy. It's just, it's just really up to you to grab it, right? It's like I said, it's that mindset. But if, if I, I have to say one word about the Navy, it's opportunity. It's opportunity for me to, to spend time with, with what I, what I love to do, which is, uh, hang out with my family and, and hang out with and do, and do my job best way I can and take care of my sailors. That's fantastic. Excellent word. Nice choice, chief. Nice choice. So, um, so cadets, you know, this is our broadcast for today. Chief, I really want to thank you for taking your time. Remember, everybody, he's out in, uh, you know, Arizona. So that's uh, two hours earlier than it is right now. Yes. On the East Coast. So, you know, thank you for interrupting the, the your afternoon in order to spend time with us. Really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, cadets, remember, there is that online quiz. So give us a few moments when this uh, broadcast winds up. So we'll post the URL for that. Uh, take the quiz. Get your two hours of virtual credit. And uh, have some pride that you you learned the information that uh, you received today. If everything is not covered in the quiz, because sometimes that's the case, look it up on the internet. You know you're good at it. It's all out there. You'll do fine. So for those who are watching, again, who are watching the recorded view, if you have comments, questions, anything you want to send towards the chief or anything towards us, please put that within the comment section. And while you're there, why don't you just smash that like button a few hundred times? We really appreciate that. It makes MC1 uh, Quinlan smile, and that's what we were really, really looking for all the time. So make yes. sure you do that as well. So, Smash that button. <laughs> exactly. So on behalf of myself, Peter Officer Quinlan, STG1 Lewison, Ensign DePipio, uh, I want to thank you again for joining us, and we will see you next time, which is going to be a really great speaker from uh, the Navy SEALs, next time on another episode of Real Sailors, Real Sea Stories. Take care, everybody. See Thanks, you everyone.